Three sorts of chromatography. Let's start off with paper chromatography. The paper is the stationary phase and the mobile phase in this case is propanone, which is now varnish remover. The black ink on the left, purple ink on the right. You'll notice that the purple ink's really two different inks, light blue and purple, and the black is many different colors. So looking at the purple ink, that prefers to be dissolved in the mobile phase, so it's going up quite high. The orange component of the black ink, well that's not moving up very much at all compared to the others, so that one would rather be in the, the stationary phase. So it's not so easy to do this. Let's, just, let's look at some bloopers. In this case, uh, the inks are starting to overlap. That's one problem. And the second problem is that pretty much all the inks going up all the way. There's not very good separation into different spots. Other things that can go wrong is if you put the dots underneath the mobile phase when it's in the container, then the dots will spread out in the mobile phase and contaminate it. So you're not going to get very good results. What went wrong here? And how can it be fixed? And here's another common mistake. There are two ways at least to fix this one. Retention factor, or RF values, can be used to identify components of a sample. The distance from the line that the sample was on to the middle of the blob that's produced, divided by the distance from the line to the top of the solvent, will give you the RF value for that particular solvent on that particular paper. So in this case, the RF value is 0.5. No units. Thin layer chromatography, instead of using cellulose as the stationary phase, alumina or silicon dioxide is used on an inert support. Here's my column full of alumina and I'm running the water mobile phase through first of all. Once that's gone, I've put in my sample of black ink from a black pen. Now you can see the black ink is being split into two here. I need to run a bit more of the mobile phase through to keep it going. There we go. So it's been split into blue and yellow and the green is kind of a mixture between those two. I'm collecting the blue sample first and then just as I think it's going to be contaminated with a bit of yellow I've swapped it. This sample here I will discard because it's blue and yellow and now I hope to collect the yellow sample. Now you can see the yellow's not really following through with the mobile phase. There's a little coming out, but not as much as I would have liked. So what you can do with column chromatography is change the mobile phase, and then it will hopefully flush it out. So I'm now going to change the mobile phase to acetone. Excellent. You can see the yellow color fading and the acetone to taking out the yellow. Column chromatography can be used uh, for bulk separation. That's its main usage.